orbit around the star Superstructures make a little go hey, Wonder if them locate the tropics The pole star, mine and Polaris hey, The legend of the tribe of Judah Oh, greetings, deep greetings, bro. Yeah. Greetings. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, how's life, King? How's life? Yeah, life is good, man. Give that thanks and praise. Every yes, sir. Day. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, then. Yes, sir. So, um, is it natural for you to um, start playing music? Uh, yeah, it, it was natural for me because... The thing about it, I was born in it. So yeah. it's around me and you see everybody playing it and yeah. The legendary Vaughn Benjamin of Akibaka and of Midnight. Um I've heard that you've um worked with him. Um I think was it three times he came to your studio? Three times or four yeah, three times. So you were working on the album Nurtured Frequency and his recent polarities. So um could you speak about yeah, like your experiences with him, um, the type of man he was? Um, could you touch on that again? Yeah, man. Van was a one of a kind. He yeah. is one of those kind of guys where you know came on earth for a reason. Yeah. And they did their work that they were supposed to do. And when he came to the studio, you felt this anointing and this love and this differentness that he was very strong into his faith and his belief, yeah. you know? And um, it's the first kind of guy I noticed that came in the studio and just write a song on the spot. So when we were building the rhythm, um, we was working with this company, um, I think it's called Zionites. Yeah, 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 Zionite, Zionite, Zionite Kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love working with them and um, yeah. also bless drew keys he passed away oh yeah yeah Good player for it's them. true true um we've done a lot of production anytime they come to the studio we do like 11 songs in one day. Yeah, man, 11 man, man, yeah. and van van came in a couple time man and the man writing and just born him spliff yeah man. <laughs> i noticed when him born him spliff him said all right i'm ready to go in the boot yeah. i said okay so I think that he's doing a demo straight and him do about three or four songs already and he memorized them so he can still do it live. Yeah. <laughs> but what he's talking about, he has conversations with everyone and get their input or understanding or he'll tell you his understanding why he's writing why for what he's writing about. And he'll write about the now, you know, the present and the future, what he believes the future would be. And a lot of what he was saying, we're living in now. So I would say he was like a, a prophet on the side. Yes, sir. Undercover prophet. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, at the moment, you are at um, the helm of the Whalers, the band's sophomore album landed you a Grammy nomination for Best Reggae Album. So what, So, is it a lot of pressure for you? For the Whalers, if you think about it to be a pressure, then it, it can be. It's true. Yeah, but um, I don't put my mind on it. I just do the work because I know we're doing jaw works. Yeah, man. Just to continue the legacy moving.
spirit and continuing my family's legacy. And um, when I was born, even though the barriers are one thing, but my father was, you know, controlling and moving the whalers moving forward. So that's why I, I'm continuing the whalers legacy, you know, because of that's what I grew and saw. Respect to everyone who was there before. So, you know what I mean? So that's why it can be difficult in that way because um, there were many others before, like yeah, Bonnie, Pete, yeah. Yeah, Junior Bratway, they had Beverly. Yeah. You know, you had all of these people from the history. And um, you also had Joe Higgs, who's also my grandfather. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. My grandfather. Yeah, it's so, yeah. nice. Who created and helped to, you know, harmonize, make sure everybody is in line. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the pressure can come on. And then there's a couple original members that's also played with Bob. They yeah, were from before, so you know, even if they work with us sometime, it can be challenging because as I'm running it now, I try to run the band and the music differently in these times, like um learn from the, the, the mistakes really of touring. Like being early to the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um changing up management where the management is more caring for the band than actually the individual. Well, for me, you know, the Whalers now is more like Led Zeppelin because true, I am the core of the band now is whoever play with us, it, it becomes it. But I am the one who just becomes the Whalers because sometimes you have to be careful. <laughs> you, you say, yeah, man, it's a band. Mm -hmm. And then when you do something on your own, then everybody's like, but it's a band. But yeah, it's a band, but I am the bloodline of the band that's carrying on the thing. Yeah, it's so true. You have, to, you have to make that known from day one because sometimes it can get to people and they can have the, you know, they yeah, all say, man. yeah, man, it's our legacy. It's our time now. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> it's our time yeah that we can do the message but they only they cannot be so many leaders in the band you know yeah my father was the leader and everybody was there and they left so that's why yeah. we ran it on so that's the only challenge but the sound is not much of a challenge to me because i learned that from my father mm. but the only challenge is to keep that sound with whatever we're moving towards too so you still keep that respect. It's true. Because you know, that's yeah. what's important. The rubber dog yeah. roots yeah. and you feel yeah. the goosebumps. Yeah. yeah, it's true, true. Yeah. Okay, so I think the last time you came on the show, you were like Misty Morning. Like Misty Morning was your favorite, um, your favorite rhythm. Um, so like you were like um, family man. Um, made his own version. He had his own version um, of Misty Morning. Could you um, talk to us about that again? Yeah, uh, Misty Morning. Yeah, I don't know why that song resonates to me. It resonated yeah. to me as a kid. Yeah. I remember. I guess the way my father tuned it, because he had this music room in Jamaica. Yeah. This room is just his room, and he had his sub. He had um, what do you call? It? He had two fifteens. And he had two 18 sub. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he had, you know, the twelves. So when that thing hit your man and tune it up nice, to 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 Yeah, yeah. Tick 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then the way um how we had it tuned up yeah every time uncle carlton roll come it's like it's like, yeah. like um you know the thunder, thunder yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the song and my yeah. father told me lee scratch perry when my father and i went to see scratch went to yeah. a studio and the music was like boom and he said family yeah. man see 
big sound and he's like yeah. this with rings yeah big oh sound. yeah yeah like that like that <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a way how you can get the sound to be big without distortion oh yeah you have the weight and that's why yeah. as a as a kid that's why bob marley and the whalers mm. said their music is so simple, even a baby can understand. Mm, it's true. And me, as a four-year-old at the time, would have understand that this is the music for the soul. Yeah, it's true. true. Yeah, so um so basically uh the last time you came on the show you were like um Burning Spears um Halem album and Rastaman Vibration by Bob Marley was your favorite albums because because of the quality that they had back then. And now was it was it true that um Family Man is the one that mixed um Burning Spears Halem album? Yeah, well um Halem album, my father's yeah. always there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And making sure everything is good. I wouldn't say he was the one who mixed it by himself. Yeah. Because he had engineers. So the person that recorded the Halem album was a great engineer named Dennis Thompson. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I've heard of him as well, yeah. Uncle T, you know? Yeah. So he toured with us sometime, like when we go to New York. He's... One of the original engineers. He's actually the first engineer Bob Marley had live before he they they got international. You know. Yeah. And after yeah. that, um, he needed help because he was torn with Bob and also torn with Burning and torn with other people. Mm -hmm. So um, when he left on tour, they got this other engineer called Carl Peterson, who's yeah. also a fabulous engineer. He is the one who mixed the album of the century. Yeah, um, and then yeah, Errol Brown that came in. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, but Errol Brown was always around, you know. Yeah, you know man. I mean? but um, when he became more, from what my father told me, and you can hear it because through me as an engineer, you can hear the sound of them, you know. Yeah. So, Heal him album basically was recorded by Dennis Thompson, and it yeah. was mixed by Errol Brown. Yeah. Gilbert or Jill's song is it Vama's I don't know how to say yeah yeah was it recorded in Tough Gun? yes it was recorded yeah 19, yeah I think it's 1984 yeah 1984 okay so um the Whalers over the years have worked with Rupert and, um, Neves Outboard Gear and um Roger Mayer's effect pedal. So can you tell us how how those um relationships started and how both contributed to um your past and current sound? All right. So um 
the reason why I was a huge fan of Rupert Neve, yeah. there's an album that Bob Marley did, I think, when he was with um, Danny Sims. Yeah. Um, and he did songs like Reggae on Broadway and those other things, you know? And if you listen to how Bob's vocal sound and the music sounded, yeah. When I researched and saw pictures, they were using that 1073 Neve board. Yeah. And I think that's the only time Bob used that kind of board. I think everything else from that was either Helios or MCI or APIs. And it sounds fabulous. But there's something that the Neve had yeah. that mm. even in these times still stands out. And don't, mm. don't get me wrong, you know, all the preamps them are great because there's some time I need an API to get what I need. Yeah. You know? But um, that's why I'm a huge fan of um, Rupert Neve. Rupert Neve. So that's why when we, you know, I got the relationship with them and the CEO of Rupert Neve is a huge fan of my father. And yeah. My father. You know, and he tell me all the album he listened to the dub album with yeah, in Toby yeah. and stuff. So that's where the relationship started. From yeah. There. Because they understand the sound and that Toby sound with the silk button, you just press it and go. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah. so, so, um, yeah, what was the other question? It was Rupert Neban, who again? Um, Roger Mays, Roger Mays, yeah. Okay, so Roger Mayer was introduced to the band by Junior Marvin. So that's yeah. when they were working on the album Exodus and Kaya. Yeah. And, you know, Junior was supposed to be like the, the next Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. He <laughs> and yeah. he basically, from what I've heard and what he told me, was um, he had two offer to either play with B.B. Wonder. Mm. No, 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 no. Sorry, not Stevie Wonder. Um, I can Tina. To Tina oh, yeah, Turner. Yeah. Or he was supposed to go to um, Bob Marley. So he said he mentioned to his mother, and his mother said, you know, that's your roots, because he was born in Jamaica, grew up in England. That Roger Mayer, through how he played, like close mm -hmm. to Jimi Hendrix. And when Roger Mayer came to the band, my father showed him his bass, and Bob showed him his guitar, and they found out that. <laughs> Every everybody's mm. instruments was out of key. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just like, oh, in the world, you guys played and did all these albums. My dad said, mm. oh yeah, when he's holding the the A note, he has to push it up to keep it. He was. They were all doing experiments to keep everything in key, because they didn't have the the you know that much instinct of what to do. So they'll do everything on their own, and that was good. That's how they learned yeah. it. So Roger Mayer said, um, I can fix it up for you. So my father told me that he asked him, how could we get the sound to be on a professional level? And Roger said, you can't because the notes and the frequency of all of your guys' notes are wobbling. You want the note to go like this, and that's why you get the people. You know, And that's why yeah. I love Rupert Neve too, because like Rupert Neve, the eyes and stuff, if you play yeah. at a festival, the notes, the, 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 the music and the notes travel like this. But other time, if it travels like this, it, you know, it don't have that much yeah, effect. Yeah, it's true, true. Yeah, so yeah. Roger knew the effect. So he tuned everybody's guitars and stuff. They did Exodus album. Boom. <laughs> album of the century. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
as everyone knows, you are um, Aston Family Man's son. So tell us some things about Family Man that most of us would not know. Yeah, so my father, he's a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> my father loves yeah. to laugh, you know, yeah. and um, he definitely loves to have a good time. It's true, um, true. And um, he is a person that really cares about people. Um, he'll give. If you're struggling and he have, he'll give to you. And sometimes if he doesn't have, mm. he'll still find a way to give. To yeah. You. It's good. And that's what we learned. And, um, you know, yeah. I don't know how my father was in his younger, younger age. Because my oh. father had me when he was in his 40s. Yeah. Big ups, big, <laughs> big ups, Israel Vibration, Israel yeah. Vibrations, Joy. Ah, big up, yeah. uncle. Yeah, <laughs> vibration in the place. Yeah. What's the place? Sorry, guys, I wasn't checking. Yeah. Howard, what's up, man? Hey, Howard is a wicked job. Oh, my I played with him in um high school. Yeah, wicked, wicked drama. Big up yourself, man. Yes, yeah. Jay Howard music. Yeah, yeah. Big, up, big up, big up yourself, my brother. Yeah, yeah. And I see my drummer, Bridget, here. Oh, you mean Lion Camp? <laughs> yeah, so, so, but Rastaman Vibration album though was mixed by mm. um, my father and Alex Saskin. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Al Alex Saskin um, was one of the best engineers and still the best engineer today. Everybody talks about him Carl Peterson, yeah. Dennis Thompson, Errol Brown. I think they all learned stuff from him because he knew the scientific part of. The mixing he always talk about the 360 degrees you know yeah. they brought him back to mix for survival album so he mixed basically rastaman vibration and then survival and i think he did some stuff in uprising but not much because some of the stuff for uprising was already recorded in survival time yeah 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 like, yeah uh, could you be love i gotta tell you something with that Dennis Thompson told me that the original Could You Be Love that was supposed to come out, they accidentally erased the tape. Oh, yeah. And from my to my understanding, I think Jacob Miller was on it too. Yeah. Yeah, so but you know, everything happened for a reason. Maybe it was too yeah. powerful, maybe it was too advanced for that time. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you make music and it's so advanced, and the next thing you know, it, it got erased. And you're like, why did it get erased? <laughs> the time <laughs> like, it's not the right time yet. You're going to mash up everybody's head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yesterday, yesterday, I um, had the reasoning with um, Carl Alu One Drop yesterday. Yes. So anytime, like, let's say if I play the drums, I feel like spirit, it's just like spirituality, spirituality, you having a conversation with God, having a conversation with your ancestors, like the snare, the tons, the um, high, the high hats and all that. So um, when you play the drums, what kind of feeling does it give you when um, playing the drums? You know, playing the drums is like a therapy. And um, especially when the music is being played right, correct. Yeah, man. Yeah, but I mean... It's basically like martial arts, you know. You have yeah, something yeah, yeah. on your mind and you want to get it out so you can do True. different things. You can do yoga, you can do True. meditation, or you can play drums. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> so that's why I kind of use it. No, no, that's not what I kind of use. That's what I mm. use it for as yeah. well. And also to, to, to practice to become, you know, you have to practice to become better. And um, you always want to increase your craft. Thank you. 
everyone say, yeah, man, you're the greatest. You're, you're, you're good to go. Never let that create an ego. Always know that there's, a, you know, everybody's great at their own thing. Every musician yeah. is amazing, you know, at their own style. So, so all we can do is just encourage and everybody just keep practicing and create that sound and create their sound and their signature so they can, you know, yeah. give that energy to the world and to the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So, besides your um, dad, Carlton Barrett, um, L. Y. Lindo Jr., Marvin Tyrone, Downey C. Cole Patterson, Bonnie Whaler, Peter Tosh, and all those great, um, great musicians influenced you. So, how did they really listen to, let's say, play music, play the drums, um, produce music? So, like, what really gave you the, the inspiration? Mm. The inspiration really came from the most high. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, true. Because, um, someone would, someone had to do it. Yeah. You know, someone had to do it, and many are called, and few are chosen. Few are chosen. Yeah. The thing about it, you see, when God give you a gift, you know, God give you a gift. Yeah. You have to, you have to use it. You know, because. As we say with Whalers music, music is bigger than we think. It's not a normal thing. So we have to really take it very serious. Yeah. You know, and I know, yeah, you have to really take it serious. And it's sad that a lot of us couldn't stay together, like a lot of the original couldn't stay together. But when you really check it out, you have to understand that they... If you're going on a high level and you reach to a peak, and then when Bob passed, everything just went pew. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I could understand it, or no one could understand it. We can think we understand it, and we can have an idea, but there's really no way how to understand it. And it got them kind of crazy. So even the ones them that don't look as crazy, they still it still hit them because it's, you know what I mean? And then Bob had every everything under control where everyone was taken care of. So it's just sad, you know what I mean? When he passed, everything just went. Because those guys were more not of a contract. They were more of a, uh, you know what I mean, a shake hand. And, yeah. and Bob, when he speaks, he means what he speaks. And he did do what he said he was going to do. Not only for the band, but for the the world, for the people, spread the love. You know, so yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the producing stuff came naturally and just watching my father. So if I'm gonna sum up sum up everything, I would just say Aston Fabulous and Barrett. And that sums up everything. It's true. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Like, what's your favourite Carlton Barryton Aston Family Man track? Favourite Carlton Barryton Aston Family Man Barryton mm. track? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a deep one because that mm. one is crazy. Um. That's difficult, man, because I have like a million of them going do, 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 and then mm -hmm. I got to pick one. Yeah, man. You know? All right. I mean, all right. From Bob Marley. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All man. right. I would say, I would basically say, um, Ambush in the Night. Yeah. Ambush in the Night is one of my favorite drum and bass. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, like that. Come on, come on. Yeah. That one and Running Away, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Running Away. Um, I, the reason why Running Away is also my favorite, my father told me that they tried to experiment on the Hyatt. Yeah. On that song. And it's true. If you listen to it, Oh yeah, yeah. Was that from the Kaya um, album? Kaya album. Kaya album. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Nineteen seventy-eight. Yeah, and man. So because of that, and you see, after after before the song come in, Jaying when Kaya go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You run him start. It don't start. You run him. Tick cap him. Run it. Run it. Tick 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 cap. Yeah, like, man, yeah. it just gave you the goosebumps. So yeah, those two songs on Bob Marley era. For um the eighties, I would say because also in the eighties we had people like he was um Aston and um Aston Family Man and Carlton were um, um like they were making albums with people like Jimmy Riley. Um, Alpha Blondie. Have you heard of Alpha Blondie's album Jerusalem? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah, gonna man. say actually Jerusalem. Yeah, Jerusalem is a unique song. Yeah, you know, yeah, um, there's, there's an album from this guy named um Jamel. Yeah, okay, I think I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Yeah, there's there's a song when him um um eruption mm. and then uh, yeah eruption that whole album the drum and bass to me you know why the album really resonates to me Re mm -hmm. you know resonates to me too is because um I think that was one of the first time they went back to Harry J studio yeah the album was recorded at Harry J studio. And I think the last time they recorded the Harry J Studio was 1976, Rastaman Vibration. Yeah. Ever since that, they were going to Dynamics and Randy's and other places to, to record the rest of the song before Tough Gang, Hope Road, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So that's why I like that album. So you can hear about that Harry J sound, but with the new Fams and Carly song, <laughs> yeah. yeah, with more advanced. Cause I I study Carlton song more yeah. in the eighties after Bob because yeah. he, he developed a new song and he was more solid. But oh yeah, it's not that he used to speed up. Because I remember Bob was is is a showman and man, Bob is a one of a kind man. Yeah, when, man. When, my father tell me say when Bob walk on stage on the presence. It's like no other. The whole crowd mm. just have to be like, my gosh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so yeah, so I like mm. those songs from the eighties. And yeah. we have other people from the eighties yeah. to like um Yeah man. So I, I I mentioned Jamel. I yeah. mentioned um Gilbert Ojil, yeah. Moji. Um there's a Alpha Blondie Jerusalem. Alpha Blondie. You have an album named yeah. Donald and Lulu. Yeah. It's a wicked album too. And um yeah, yeah, actually, there's a wicked album, you know. It, it's called yeah. Reggae Vibration. Yeah. Yes, yeah, from um, is this guy from Japan? I think he's half Japanese. No, he's Japanese and half black. 
or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his name is Joe Yamanika. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that album is wicked. And it was mastered in Japan. So I was saying that when I do another project, I go try, go to a master company in Japan and try a vibe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. those ones, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, oh yeah. Also, um, Alpha Blondie's album Jerusalem was that also recorded in Tough Gong as well, the Tough Gong Studios. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Recorded in Tough Gong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What memories do you um, have of Family Man? Like, what memories do you have of um, the legendary Family Man? The memories. I remember when he used to take me to the hills every yeah, week. Yeah. Yeah. Take me to the wheel, the, the the hills in Jamaica every weekend, and you know, anytime you go up to the hills, when he's coming back down, we're gonna go to Fifty Six Oak Road. Yeah. It's yeah. always Hills Day, Bob Marley Museum. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. we never went to the Bob Marley Museum every weekend, but we know that if we go to the hills, he's gonna go to the Bob Marley. Museum. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, I, and it, as a kid, I used to like going, I used to go on the lion, you know, the, the, the statue. They have the statue mm. lion. And I go, vroom, look, daddy, I'm riding the lion. <laughs> like a bike, you know. And it was nice, man. And um, it was always a great vibe. And Lenny yeah. Chin is here. He used to have a restaurant yeah. there, um, at the Bob the Museum. So we used to go there and eat some food around that time but you know in, in the 90s was still great you know and um, yeah. i remember before garnet silk died my father got a call from garnet silk uh, manager and they were supposed to record some songs together <laughs> and they recorded a song together yeah, yeah. A song called slave so if you hear that song Slave, tired of being a slave, tired of being a slave, mm. tired of being a slave. Daddy, do to do, 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 yeah, we get tuned so you can check it out. Tired of being a slave, yeah, gone at silk, yeah, okay, so, um, we've seen a um, historic collaborations with children and grandchildren of bob marley um under the lead under your leadership of the band including um uniting greats such as tyrone downey um donald kinsey um junior marvin on live tours including the late great um l y lindo and also recently yourself and julian marley so like um, how does it feel being nominated after 20 years? Yeah, man, it feels amazing. I yeah. feel great. I look at my medal every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good, it's good. You, you know, because it's very hard to get nominated, but it's, it's hard work. And, you know, I would be lying to you if I said um the Grammy doesn't mean anything to me. It's hard. true, true. Because when you work hard to reach to that level and you reach to the nomination, you're going to keep working hard. Yeah, because in life, we as human beings, we need things to keep us going. There's different things that make us keep going. And in music, for me, what keeps me going is my family, the people, because the people need the music. It's very important because we're like one of the people that can save the earth musically to enlighten people from the bloodline and the legacy, you know? So, and then to reach to that level, it shows the hard work because it's hard work we're doing. And it's good that you can have quality music because um, the music industry nowadays, I can't really say too much because I don't really know the deep deep of the, the music industry why some of these music are actually coming out but um i just stay true to myself as ziggy molly said yeah, you have to be true to yourself and i'm being true yeah. and i think people appreciate you more when you're true to yourself 
It's true. You know, than trying to do something that's not really you. Because, I mean, I can do dance. All. I love dance all the time. I can do reggaeton. I can do these things. And I do it. And they have my mood. But what is really me is the rubber dub, roots. Once he say roots, if I get a client and he said he wants fully roots, he knows he's going to yeah. get all of me. <laughs> 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 but I mean, there's times a lot to experiment too. You know, so yeah. it, you never want to st stay in one place either. It's good to experiment and learn other styles. So, yeah, okay. it is it, a yeah. great thing. And it's an honor working with the Marlies, and it's an honor working with the previous members who played with Bob as well, especially yeah. Earl Violindo that's not here. No. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, okay, yes, sir. So, yeah. You've worked um, a lot with Josh Barrett. Um, so could you tell us about the collaboration chemistry? Yeah. I mean... Yeah. The chemistry with, with him back in them days, it was good. It was really good. You know what I mean? We, we did a lot of great work. And won the bus uh, by the equipment. And I said, all right, we're going to make some music, you know? Yeah. We're make the music and make it work mm. at that time, so yeah. It's true, yeah. Okay, so in today's um, world, all na like all nations um, are affected by the economic um, fallout from COVID-19 and the Whalers' One World, One Prayer album struck a note through the world when people were looking for for hope so getting millions of views as soon as it was released so can we ex like can we expect more where can we expect to see more music um coming from you online yeah 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 see more music coming from you from online <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like but, um we, yeah, we'll do yeah. promotion. Um I'm working with a lot of different people in different genres, which is great. It's um, true. Europe, um, you know, Jamaica, our country yeah, and then yeah. you know, the UK and Brazil. I'm doing a lot of work with um people in Brazil. Yeah, um, they really do their homework. And they really take pride into the roots reg reggae. And they also appreciate it and show appreciation, which is the greatest thing. I'm working with this guy named Jagon right yeah. now. I also work with a guy named Raphael. I did a few songs for him. Um, we okay, did, yeah. For yeah, the one, uh, one of the whalers through them called Babylon Feel This One. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did a version of that. And he has some other songs out there. Um, which wicked to i think the latest one i don't remember what name because i don't speak portuguese so i can't tell you the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's, it's wicked i love working with him jagon i'm i'm mixing this whole album right now i mixed about at least six songs for him and i'm mixing one right now called lion so yeah, yeah. ah Raphael. there's Raphael right yeah, there. yeah 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 it's man? true yeah <laughs> Yes, we'll yeah. finish up your project, bro. Yeah, so we'll have a few songs with him. So we're working on some stuff with Raphael too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From Brazil, and, um, yeah. and you know, on our album we had um, Natty Roots. That was an album with us sing that song with Julian Marley called uh, "What Name Again." When love is right, yeah, I think that's what it is. When love is right, yeah, when love is right, is right. Yeah. One of them song there. The clever lyrics are missing. And it's who can split the most lyrics. And it's like a battle. Mm -hmm. the, the, the industry. Other than really just speaking positive music and giving thanks to the most high. And, and for giving thanks that we're here. And to help people. Because, I mean, if you listen to the, the lyrics from the 1930s, the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, it's like, yeah. And 80s was good, too. 90s, 
you won't really find much. But it was still kind of clever. And uh, then more of the... I realized that in the 2000s, two, the early 2000s, you had some nice music, you know, like R&B and hip hop, you know. I used to, there was a song I remember I used to hear all the time when I was in middle school called In Those Jeans by Jenny Wine. I used to, <laughs> I used to look at the girls and I said, is there any more room for me? And they asked to leave me alone, leave me alone. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a, you know, I, yeah, that, yeah. It's a bit of me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it yeah. Was like, you know, they were great music, but really and truly, that's why in this album that we did, the One World, um, Amelia had real great um, writers that could help to write these songs because we want to preserve that music, especially when it comes to the whalers. All of Bob Marley lyrics are so high-end that, you know, that's why you have to be careful with the name. Me, I can go out and work with anybody and it's fine. But this name, the whalers was always here, but the business of it was down for a while. And what we did, we, br we brought it back up. You know, when my father retired, I said, Daddy, don't worry. I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to bring the whalers back up. And that's what I did. So now we bring it on a level where we're even at a level now where we can even have the family, the Marley family back and doing stuff with us. Because the Marley family was here and then whalers just dropped. So they couldn't do anything. So now we bring it back up. Then they say, oh, all right, here we go. And, you know, we we'll make it work. And then we... we Decided to work with other people. But um, sorry to come off topic. It comes to the lyrics. It's very important. Yo, imagine back in the days, man. Could, they had clever lyrics. You could, you could even have sexual lyrics that the girls still know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. But you're not actually saying it. You know? Nowadays, they're just... Mm, it's true, true. It. It's just like girls do this for you. bring out your boy <laughs> but, um, stop that boom, boom. Yeah. yeah yeah I'm to say it live you know? <laughs> yeah but, yeah but y'all know y'all know what I'm trying to say yeah 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 yeah. it's true who are you now collaborating with like right now in the studio so right like, because now. last time you were like Jimmy Cliff Jimmy Cliff was on there we had Rick, oh. Rick Ross and some other people yeah Blood seed. Um, there's this artist that Amelia producing. She is from Puerto Rico. Wicked. Yeah. Um, I don't remember her name. Man, if I remember her name now, I would have put it in. Yeah. Yeah. Next time I'll get prepared. But she's the one who we're doing stuff with now. Um, and then um, we're also working on Julian Marley's album. I'm not gonna tell you what kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet. But um, yeah. Jamie, Jamie Hexen, myself, yeah, yeah. and Julian were doing this collaboration album. So basically, it will be two albums, but we're doing one right now that's more of an acoustic style. And then we're doing another one that's in the making, and the words are writing. Julian is writing some real high-end, powerful words. I'm like, wow, Julian, you wrote this? The man said, yeah, yeah. man, I got the inspiration. I said... That's some Bob Marley inspiration there. Yeah. Yeah, man. So these 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 new words that he's writing is really powerful. So now we want to make sure the music behind it can capture that same structure and that flavor. You know? It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And also I have a band named Reggae Force. Uh, we just came out with a song called Ticket to Ride, which is the Beatles song ticket to ride oh yeah 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 i've heard of that I've heard of that yeah yeah so we did a version a reggae version yeah so, but what i mixed it you know the we played it and i mixed it but when i listened to it i said maybe this song too whalers ish you know <laughs> because, mm -hmm. <laughs> because if i'm gonna do a whalers album yeah i kind of have to separate my song a little bit different yeah because yeah. that's what i'm doing now you know? now when i'm working True. with different people I have yeah. like six to seven snare drums that have, have tuned to different sound. Yeah. 
And I have one snare drum that's called my experiment snare drum, meaning it's no Carlton sound. It's yeah, no yeah. Guy. It's whatever Aston Barrett Jr. come up with. Yeah. And I'm going to do whatever I can do to experiment on it and say, yeah, I'm going to create my sound. But still, with the Barrett flavor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, man. I'm, what I'm trying to do is how to create my father's feel into the drums yeah because yeah my father feel can I, when i'm playing drums i can't think like how i play bass yeah i'll, I'll, be, I'll play drums two on the beat are more like mikey boo you know mikey boo is a wicked drummer mm, but um true. when my father was doing gigs with mikey boo when he was in whalers my father had to push the bass because mikey boo was too solid yeah carlton was very solid but carlton was following the vibe carlton is like wherever bob go da, 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 ra, da, 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 do, do. <laughs> ding, ding. mikey boo was like if anybody go da, 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 mikey boo go yeah. do, do, do. wicked same way but it was a mm. dim, different chemistry yeah you know so i want to find a way how to create my father's chemistry with mm. my soul in yeah. the drums as well so and it's fun because you never run out of ideas. It's always, always good to create, you know? The drummer yeah. call that you did the interview with yesterday, he's a wicked oh, yeah, yeah. drummer. Yeah, it's true, yeah, true, I love true. working with him. Um, um, there was a gig that I couldn't make because I was getting my American passport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to leave and get the passport because I had the green card and then, because I still have my Jamaican. You know, I'm Jamaican, I can't get rid of yeah, my yeah, passport. Yeah, yeah. My daughter is here and yeah. is here. Greetings, Israel based on yeah. the case right out of the heart of West Africa. Ah, uh, West Africa? Yes, you mean, you, the thing is about it, you always uh, come on my, uh, what do you call it, Instagram and like my baseline. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> bless up, <bro. laughs> Yes, yeah, so. I've been a great fan of, of Family Man, you know, my eyes, one of my biggest influence in the music business. I play bass, guitar, and I, got, I just set up a studio in, in, in Senegal, you know, so I used to live in London, and then okay. I moved to Africa, which I repatriated in Africa. But I'd like you guys to come to Africa, do a gig, that's what I'm trying to organize. Yeah, yeah, man. Because I was, I, was involved, I was involved in uh, bringing modern heritage. The first time they come here, it means that I was involved to, to get them here, you know? Yeah. It's true, true. Yeah, man. Morgan Heritage. Well, Morgan You know, we're family with them, too, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're family with them, too. So, and me and Grams was talking a lot the other day. It's true. I, you know, I did a song for them called Bedrock. Uh, not their last album, but the album before that, there's a song named Bedrock. I play drums. Bedrock. Wicked show. Give thanks. Give thanks. The thing is about it, my brethren, is this. Uh, I like what you guys are doing. And I, uh, by keeping the legacy of your father and keep the the wheel is going. This is very important for I and I because you guys have a big influence on us and the roots music, you know, that will never die. I'm not criticizing the brothers and give thanks. Okay, so I'll sign off now and I'll leave you to for somebody else to come mm -hmm. in, okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. One love. One, One love. <laughs> <laughs> I use Logic. Yeah, yeah. I use New Window. I use Studio One. Yeah. I use Harrison Mix Bus. And I use Luna. Yeah. yeah. It, de it, de it depends on the different insp inspiration that I have. Um, back in the days, I used to use Logic to, to start my rhythms and then transfer it to Pro Tool. But now I just now because Pro Tools sounds so much bigger and better now. No, no, Logic still sound big and great too. But um, Pro Tools, 
have a kind of new flavor how their sound sound that I like it so um, to have more of that tip kind of warmness but before I never liked Pro Tool because it sounded like a magnifying glass was over the music so it's like you're playing and it's like it can't get the sound <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's also that's from Pro Tools back in the days and also from the interface so yeah. your, your digital converters are very important as well so like right now i'm using the apollo x4 yeah they're really good so it it, it helps the sound to be more you know and if you have an external clock is even better yeah get the sound more you know dominant but pro tools hd I don't, what they call it now no they call it ultimate pro tools ultimate it sounds more rich yeah, you know, yeah. Before they used to say, no, it's a software. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Pro Tools, HDR, whatever is the same. It's not the same thing. Listen to me, man. When you use the Pro Tools Ultimate, it have this little tiny, there's this little tiny flavor that is like it just so rich. So there's a difference. I mean, they have to do that because that's how they're going to make their revenue. <laughs> yeah, but there's ways to beat the yeah. system because I'm mixing everything on just my Pro Tool 2020. Yeah. You know, let's have the latest one. All right, now, and it's nice. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Some days I get bored and I go to Logic. And let's go to Logic. And then Logic is very easy making music. And it has a lot of great sounds, the sounds. Yeah. Yeah, you can. And a lot of the synthesizers, they can make your sound. That's what I like. You can make your sound other mm. than just get a preset. So most of the sounds that I use is not sounds that are there. I make my sound. Yeah. Someone has a question. The question says, when will, when will you be writing the book of the wheelers? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> listen. What you want to know in the good? Do you want to know what you want to know in the book? You want to know the good and the bad? The good, the bad, mm. the ugly, like the movie. <laughs> you just want to know the good. You talk more good than anything else, because even if someone had done something to me that's not nice. I'm still going to talk, speak what, how I want people to speak about me, you know? You treat others how you want them to be treated, you know, how you want to be treated. So I treat people good regardless, you know? And sometimes it's hard, you know, because we're human. And, you know, every culture is different, you know? Mm. You're from England. When, when, yeah. England, when people from England get mad, oh, my God. <laughs> what did you say? What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, cut so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And then Jamaicans, when we get upset, sometimes we don't say anything. You just see our face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also a sign to it. I mean, do you guys believe in signs? I believe in signs. You know? Same, same. Yeah. You know, some people can be a Scorpio. Someone can be a Leo, Libra. I believe in these things. A lot of Libras like me is the same. You know, we 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 like to balance our scale. If it's off, it's not good. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah. I'll, I'll write a book. I'll write a book. It won't be, it cannot be too much about Bob. I mean, I know a lot of stuff about Bob Marley from the history, but it's kind of more touchy because I've never met him. So I'll just be talking from what I heard. So when you hear things, you have to be careful because you know that saying, you ever play that game? Where everybody's around and you tell one person mm -hmm. something and when it comes back to you, it's something different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so you have to be careful. But I can tell you stuff about my family, Carlton yeah. and family man. Then that I can definitely tell you. And I can tell you my experiences with some of the members, such yeah. as Tyro Downey, Junior Marvin, Earl Wyatt Lindo. I had more experience with Earl Wyatt Lindo and Natty. His name is Ian, Natty Wela. He played the, the um, synthesizer bang on War, on Rasaman Vibration album. Ching, Shong, Ching, Shong, Tung. 
And he also played organ on the last show, Pittsburgh, because my father said wire was, they couldn't find wire yeah. on that show. So Ian is the one who did that show. So yeah, I guess I need to write the book, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can know more, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that was, uh, I don't know, a month ago, I was listening to like one of your interview interviews. You were like, you come from, you also come from Maroon's descent as well. You descent yeah. from the Maroons as well. Same, yeah, same, my, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandmother, um, yeah. from my dad's, so my my father's mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's she's like um, what them call her? A maroon, a coolie maroon. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, kinda, yeah, yeah. You know, coolie Indian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I was really sure. I know she have more things in her family, but you know, Jamaica mix up and blend up. So. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. 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 Okay then. So um, I'll mash up the live right now. So have anything to say to um, your fans before um, we leave? Yeah, man, live good, eat healthy, and try to protect the earth because the earth yeah. is what we have. And um, we have to try and preserve it. Try and preserve the people that we have here. Just know that the younger generation, we cannot be selfish. Because, you know, if we see a trash on the road, ah, can't bother. We, we, we can't save the earth. There's too much to do. But that's being selfish to our children. So we have to fix it, the problems from back then, so we can make it better for our children. So they don't have to go through the same suffering. So the more the more we can, it takes more than, you know, two people can make a difference. Two, then it goes to three, then it goes, you know what I mean? So that's yeah, what yeah. I want to tell everyone. On okay, a musical then. level, I will tell mm. everyone, practice becomes perfect. Never think that you're better than anyone. And if someone thinks that they're better than you and they're coming with you with this competitive kind of vibe, you take a step back. Now the person that's going to win is the one that's quiet than the one that's always talking. Right? Sure. Silence, silence is, the, is the biggest thing what people can't deal with. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So always encourage yourself to be better. Never think you're too good. Just always practice. I just bought this um, two days ago. Yeah. There's this, this, this thing called iRig. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Up and then you hook it up to your microphone. So I have my microphone. Yes, here. sounds very good. Very, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, you see me, Rasta. Yeah, yes, the far right. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for tuning in then. Yeah, have a blessed day. Thank you very much for tuning in. And yes, yeah. have a blessed day. Yeah. Yes, everyone. Then, yeah, have a blessed day. Greetings. talking solidarity for you and for me
Aston Barrett Jr. here, and I have Tyrone Downey student, Ipez. Ipez. Yes. <laughs> so I've been telling him about the stuff that Earl Wyatt Lindo, you know, the great Earl Wyatt Lindo taught me yeah. on the last tour, and then he was showing me some stuff that the great Tyrone Downey taught him, you know, the two best keyboard players for Whalers. So we combine our, you know, well, you know, what, would, what did we combine do? Combine forces. We combine the forces, so, <laughs> so we're gonna jam. Roots Rock Reggae. I'm gonna do a little bit of the Wire thing. And he's gonna do a little bit of the Tyrone thing. And you see that combination oh, why the they were what they were. Yeah. Are they oh, are man. what they still is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. So a one, a two, a one, two, three, and <laughs>
Let's go.